very vulnerable and it cannot engage the enemy. This time we have to take our chances. The time is almost up. Capture the supply depot with artillery, the last unit, which can still move during this turn. Choose an artillery unit. Capture the supply depot. Excellent! The bridgehead have been seized. Press the end turn button to proceed to the next phase of the operation. Press end turn button. General Staff to the commander of the Condor Legion. We have seized the city of Talavera and are ready to launch a general offensive against Madrid. In cooperation with the troops of General Franco, your task is to ensure the success of the offensive. In order to proceed, you need to establish control over the following key strategic points. Las Ventas. To ensure further advance, take over the Republican supply depot. Brunet. Taking this important transport junction will allow you to possess a useful airfield close to Madrid. While in Madrid, capture the city's airport, the railroad station and the main supply depot of the Republican Army. Faithful to Franco, the garrison of Toledo keeps control of the city with defiance. Rescue the city defenders before the Republicans destroy them. The Republican Army has not yet recovered from its defeat. The current situation is favorable for your offensive. But there is no time to hesitate. Before the enemy has time to pull up its reserves, Madrid must be captured. Weapons specialist August Holzer will help you master the experimental machinery that came from the novel military doctrine of Wehrmacht. We have faith in you and expect a rapid victory. General Stabschef, Des Harris, General Lieutenant Ludwig August Theodor Beck. Icons next to a unit allow you to quickly get important information about it. If the selected unit does not move during the current turn, the canister icon will be green. If it moves, the icon will be grey. Similarly, the cartridge icon shows if the unit has made an attack during this move. The red color of icons indicates that either the fuel or ammo in that particular unit has been depleted. Your army is comprised of the core and auxiliary forces. You can distinguish between the two by the color of the figures denoting the strength of the unit. A core unit is indicated by green color. An auxiliary unit is indicated by yellow. The auxiliary forces are given for one mission only. The core forces will accompany you through the campaign, gaining strength through battles. You will be able to improve them and equip them with additional equipment. These units are the ones that should be primarily protected. Bombers are flying artillery and clear the way for our tanks. They can provide emergency support for the ground forces wherever needed. Do not leave your bombers without protection. Remember, they are prime target for enemy fighter planes. Anti-tank artillery is effective against armored vehicles. Your best tactic when using anti-tank artillery is to position it in the direction of a possible tank attack next to your other forces. Anti-tank guns provide support to neighboring units attacked by enemy tanks and armored vehicles. Infantry solidifies the success achieved by the rest of the forces. Use infantry units to escort tanks, assault and defend cities, as well as for special missions in mountainous and wooded terrain. This is the only type of troop that can fire its weapons when it crosses rivers and they can be transported by air. 
This is an enemy unit. If the intelligence level allows it, you can obtain comprehensive information about it by right-clicking on the mouse button. Anti-aircraft artillery is a powerful and versatile weapon. Not only is it capable to shield your vulnerable facilities against air attacks, but it can also effectively combat ground targets. Large caliber anti-aircraft guns are also great for destroying tanks. Recon units are able to seek out the enemy from afar, and can also locate ambush sites. You can give the reconnaissance unit the order to advance more than once per turn, as long as you still have movement points. Once the reconnaissance sees the enemy, it automatically stops, and then it can move towards any direction. Reconnaissance is extremely important in an offensive, since it provides you full awareness about the presence of the enemy unit, thus making your attack more effective. Fighter planes are needed for gaining air superiority, as well as for protecting ground forces and bomber aircraft. Keep your fighter planes close to the units that you want to protect. Enemy aircraft will return fire as soon as they are attacked. Air weaponry also allows fighters to attack ground targets, although with a low efficiency. Send the unit to the station that is connected by the railway to our primary depot in order for it to be reinforced. The Panzerwaffe is the basis of the Wehrmacht. Tanks are ideal for an offensive in an open terrain. Our tank forces have an advantage of tenacity and speed. Use them to quickly capture enemy positions, bridge through the enemy defenses, pursue and annihilate them. Assaults in cities and to positions of entrenched infantry forces will lead to high losses in tank units. In order to rearm, the aircraft has to land at an airfield. As an officer, you must lead your troops from the forefront. Despite its low firepower, your headquarters is an extremely valuable unit on the battlefield. It is an effective command and control of troops that predeterminates the outcome of the entire battle. As you pick up new administrative skills, you will be able to provide significant benefits to your unit situated in the headquarters action zone. If the headquarters is lost, the whole operation will be considered as a failure. This target is protected by enemy fighter planes. You were not able to help the Toledo garrison. Je Troops crossing water barriers are very vulnerable. You can either make sure there is no enemy nearby before they do, or provide protection for them during crossing. 
While in the water obstacle, all troops, except infantry, lose their fighting ability. 